Presented by PrinceKCups.com. Taped live and in color from Studio 505 at the Tribeca Flashpoint Academy in beautiful downtown Chicago, Illinois. It's Steve Gatlin's Star Makers. When you feel so full of talent And you've got that special pep When Hollywood and Broadway are calling you And you want to take that very first step I'll see Gatlin's Star Makers The spotlight shining bright. Get out there, you shoot it, star and sparkle through the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see Gatlin Star Makers. So loud. I'll see Gatlin Star Makers. You're wild with the crowd. See Gatlin Star Makers. See Gatlin Star Makers. See Gatlin Star Makers. Yeah. And now your host, Steve Gatlin. There's a TV show I used to watch as a kid called Sir Roger's Make Believe. It was about a funny old bachelor and his imaginary puppet friends. There was even a caboose. If you're a kid, welcome to your old new favorite show, Steve Gadlin's Star Makers, where we present tomorrow's stars of Hollywood and or Broadway. I like to think we're creating memories that will last a lifetime. And if you are a kid, a lifetime is a really long time. I'm a grown-up, and that's how I get to host a television show. Before we meet this, week, this week's acts, let's say hello to our printkcups.com studio audience, Quentin Gallick and Nick Petticord. If you're a fan of our show, you know that one talent we really enjoy is musicians. They're so fun to watch because of all the music they make. Music is like Silence's adventurous step cousin. Don't I know it is what your toes are saying right now. But did you also know that musician isn't the only talent about music? There's a talent called music knowledge. That's the ability to talk about music like you're a know-it-all. Here's Brian Bedell demonstrating his talent music knowledge. I'm Brian, and I love rock and roll music. I can talk about it all day. The part of my brain that's supposed to remember my mom's birthday is storing David Bowie's birthday instead. It's January 8th. I can name all the Beatles. John, Paul, George, Ringo, Pete, Stu, the other George, Brian, Billy, and Neil. Honestly, I don't like the Beatles that much. I love Hard Day's Night and Help, the movies more than the records, actually, and it's, there's some other good songs here and there. But mostly I think they're just trying too hard to make art instead of music, and it's kind of their fault that there are rock operas and pretentious bands like Radiohead. And it's Radiohead's fault they're even more pretentious and much worse bands like Coldplay and, uh, and The Killers. And my friend Jane calls that beige music, and that's about right. The Beatles are interesting to talk about, though. My favorite Beatle was George, but you could probably guess that. Everyone bags on Ringo, but he was really, really, really good at being Ringo, and the Beatles wouldn't have been the same without Ringo. It bums me out that in most bands you get a couple people who think they're creative geniuses like Paul and John, and everyone thinks that that's what really makes the band great, but I think it's more about that specific combination of people that makes the band great. Like, look at the Pixies or the Velvet Underground. Lou Reed and John Cale thought they were so great, but neither of them ever came close to doing anything as good as the Velvets, again, without Sterling Morrison and Mo Tucker telling them to shut up once in a while. I think we're all creative geniuses, but most of us think our ideas are stupid and don't follow up on them. Lou Reed was convinced all of his ideas were amazing, and they were a lot of the time, but plenty of them were pretty stupid too. Knowing when ideas are stupid is just as important as having good ideas in the first place. You can tell a lot about people from the music they like. If I'm at someone's house, the first thing I want to see is their record collection. I had this one friend in the 90s who only owned like three Annie DeFranco CDs and like a Christmas CD. That's not right. How can you get through life on four CDs? I've worn out more copies of the Stone Roses first album alone. My friend Kevin says if you ask someone to rank the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Kinks, and The Who, that that'll tell you pretty much all you need to know about them. I like the Kinks the best, but you could probably tell. Um, you could talk about this for hours and make a good argument for any of those bands. The Stones were the most consistent for sure. You know, pretty much all their stuff's good. I'd argue the best two songs are better than everyone else's songs, but they had a lot of filler padding out their records, like Bellboy, and, uh, and they gave us the rock opera. Uh, music fans like to rank things, though. I like to rank the Go-Go's in order of cuteness. I know they're very smart, talented women that deserve respect, but sorry, they're also cute. 
1981, Jane was the cutest, followed by Belinda, Kathy, Charlotte, and Gina. Gina seemed old enough to be my mom back then. Nowadays, Jane's still up there, but Charlotte is sort of a suburban punk mom look that's pretty cute, and Gina doesn't seem any older than the rest of them anymore, or even any older than me. Belinda and Kathy are all right, too. You know, they're all still pretty cute. I met Kathy once. She was nice. She was in this band called The Delphines for a while with Clem Burke from Blondie. Clem was in the Ramones for a while, too. He was Elvis Ramon. It stinks that all the original Ramones are gone now, but I thought it was unfair when Tommy died that all the magazines said he was the last Ramon, because you've still got Clem and, well, Elvis, and Marky was a drummer for years and years, and um, after Tommy, and CJ was bassist for a real long time, too, so there are, and there are a few other ones, too. You get, you could still get four Ramones together, though they just play bass and drums, and I guess that wouldn't really be the same. I only saw them once after Dee Dee left, so it was Joey, Johnny, Marky, and CJ. It was in Columbus, Ohio. It was a great show from what I remember. I got kicked in the head by a combat boot when someone jumped off the stage and I passed out for a while, but it was worth it. Everyone always talks about what bands they wish they'd seen and definitely have... I, everyone talks about which bands they've seen and I've definitely seen a few. Definitely the Velvet Underground more than anyone else. It was one I'd love to see. I wish I had been there for that. But I got to see a ton of good bands in the 80s and 90s. You read about great clubs and scenes in LA and Seattle and DC and London and Manchester, but I moved to Chicago in the early 90s and there were so many good bands around and great clubs and I wouldn't trade that time or place for any other music scene. I used to go see bands two or three nights a week back then. I've kind of lost track of the scene lately, but I'm sure there are just as many great new bands as there ever were. Um, in Chicago and everywhere, so I don't want to be one of those people that tells you what you missed out on. Uh, you know, there's always great stuff out there. I still try to get to shows now and then and check out new music. Get out and see some new music and buy uh, new records and CDs or MP3s or whatever. Just try to get some new stuff and keep following it. Music really helps you keep your head together. It's really important to me and it should be to everyone. Whatever you like is fine with me, even if it's beige. You just gotta believe in it and take it seriously and enjoy it. If it's meaningful to you, that's great. I don't like Hollow Notes music much, but I sure liked it when De La Soul sampled them, and Hollow Notes seemed like nice enough guys. Phil Collins' music tortured me through the 80s, but I just read that his drum sound, which is really sort of the drum sound of all that terrible 80s pop music, came as a direct result of Phil being a big fan of Martin Atkins drum sound on Public Image Limited's Flowers of Romance. And anyone who likes PIL is okay with me. Just don't make me listen to Susudio. If you can find a deep personal relevance in Susudio, there's something wrong with you, but there's pretty much something wrong with all of us, so that's okay. I'll listen to my 45 minute long Yola Tango jams, you listen to your Phil Collins, and we'll be all right. Well, Brian, come on over. Thanks so much for telling us all about music. It's so good to have you on Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. Oh, thank you, it's my pleasure. Hey, when you think custom coffee gifts, think printkcups.com. With custom flavors and designs, their personalized single-serve coffee cups are sure to please clients, friends, and all the coffee lovers in your life. Printkcups.com for all your custom coffee gifting. Stay with us. We'll be right back. at Tilted Kilt Pub in Eatery. It's more than our 30 craft and bottle beers. Or our mouth-watering menu. It's the best-looking sports pub you've ever seen. Tilted Kilt Pub in Eatery. A cold beer never looks so good. It's the Smarty Pants Balloon Kit! You get the pump. You get the book. You get the balloons. You get everything to me. Everything. A dog. A cat. This hat. A monkey. A sword. A mouse. Even this house. You get everything to me. Everything. Be more fun at work. Be more fun at school. Be more fun at party. You get everything to me. Everything. Order now and receive double the balloons. You learn by doing. The great thing that you guys do here at Flashpoint is exactly that. I don't think you could be here for too long without the sort of infectious nature of everyone being hungry to learn. 
Tribeca Flashpoint is set up in a way where the whole direction of the school is preparing the students for the real world. Show people that you're willing to do anything for what you want to do. No fear, no greed, no empathy. Sure, drawing is easy when you've got pencils and markers in your hands, but just wait till you see what our next guest, Jane Labowicz, AKA Princess Etch a Sketch, uses to make her artistic masterpieces. Can you guess? I'll give you a hint. Sometimes she goes by the name Princess Etch a Sketch. No, not Princess Brand paintbrushes. She creates unforgettable art using a toy called the Etch a Sketch. Well, it's a toy when little scamps use it, but in the hands of Princess Etch a Sketch, well, let's just say when you see this, you'll be saying, Ma, tell me about it.
Wow, Jane, come on over here to the intersection of Hollywood and or Broadway. Thanks for being on Steve Gadlin Star Makers. Thank you. That was so interesting and incredible to watch. Uh, you have to tell me, how long have you been etch-a-sketching? Well, I've been etch-a-sketching since I was four. So 18, almost 19 years now. Wow, that's incredible. I remember using an etch-a-sketch when I was a kid, and I couldn't do anything close to what you've done. I could only make tiny little squares and circles. Um, how long did it take before you were really something special with the etch-a-sketch? I'd say around the age of 12 is when I really started making things that I was really proud of. Wow. And did your friends get incredibly jealous? Yes. I know I, I had friends who were very good artists when I was a kid, and I used to just plot uh, terrible things. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure your friends were much nicer to you than, than I was to mine. Uh, thanks for being on the show, Jane. Uh, thanks for sharing your talent with us. Hey, stand-up comedy may look easy, because let's face it, it's just standing there and talking. But if you look closely, you'll see there's actually a lot more going on. You have to be careful about the things you say, because if they're not cracking people up, somebody's going to want their money back. The secret ingredient, jokes. Let's see if this next stand-up comic knows about that secret ingredient or not. Here's Greg Giuliano to perform some stand-up comedy. I was in the produce section of a grocery store, the kosher section, when I had a moment of true wisdom. I was approaching the onion section and thought, you know, an onion is a Jekyll and Hyde vegetable. It can make you cry, or if you dip it in a nice light batter and fry it, the onion will make you smile with delight. It's the sadness and joy vegetable. It's a weird vegetable. Like people, there are different colors of onions. You got your yellow, white, red. The bad thing is that we impose our social values on onions. We segregate the onions by color in the produce sections. You have the white onions in the nice section, the red onions are banished to their spot, and the yellow onions are in the middle. Onions are the Mr. or Mrs. Everything vegetable. Onions can go with breakfast, lunch, dinner, or just a snack. Because they fit in anywhere, they are truly weird. That's why I think next year, we should run an onion for the President of the United States. The campaign slogan will be, it's about time for an onion in the White House. Can you hear that campaign speech? White, yellow, red onions, we're all the same. <laughs> Let's unite and make this one United States of onions. God bless onions everywhere. In the same store, I came across several gay couples, and I asked myself, what is the difference between gay and straight people? First, I have to explain my, to myself that I ask myself these questions because I don't have any friends and people don't talk to me. But I digress. Uh, but to answer my own question, the only difference between gay and straight people is the decision to be intimate with someone of the same sex slash gender. Gay people don't have two heads. Well, they do, but in a sexual way. Gay and straight people both do brilliant and stupid things. So my 20-second analysis of the question still came down to the choice of being intimate with someone of your own sex slash gender. But if you have one gay experience, are you really gay? Is there a minimum number of same-sex events that qualify you for being gay? Is it three? Is it a percentage, like 51% gay sexual experiences? Or must you be 100% one direction? I couldn't figure it out, so I went back to the produce section and sat amongst the onions for an hour. Growing up Jewish can be a special event. Number one is the food thing. No ham and cheese sandwiches, no bacon cheeseburgers. So lunches at school and meals with non-Jewish friends turn into explaining the history of the Jewish faith. You feel like a CS CNN reporter doing a lot feature on Jewish lifestyles and cuisine. Then there's the, what do I do with myself at Christmas time? It's like you're anti-American if you don't believe in Christmas. No Christmas tree, no gifts. But it was kind of cool too as I was an anti-establishment kid who didn't follow what everybody else did. I recall from birth having college catalogs and propaganda in my crib. Instead of trips to the zoo, my parents would take me to colleges and we would take campus tours. Not exactly a fun trip for a six-year-old. I would have dreams about pepperoni pizzas and girls with big breasts, which, when you think of it, is a nice combination. Then, of course, there is Easter. No Easter egg hunts for me. Then, of course, came the guilt thing. I might as well have been wearing a t-shirt that said, I killed Jesus Christ. When people found out that I was Jewish, that's where they went. Oh, you people killed the Son of God. Well, I really didn't have a vote. If I did, I might have let him slide. But no, I go through life as a convicted felon and murderer of the creator of life. It's especially hard having to screen girl to, girls to find one who's Jewish. But it saved me a lot of drama with my mom if they were not Jewish. I developed a three-page questionnaire to give to potential girlfriends to run by my mom. My mom would always trick the girls by making up Jewish food and asking the girls how they liked it. The most fun I had at home was Passover celebration. The wine would flow easily all night. 
It was like a party, but with a more serious theme. Folks got carried away a little due to the wine. It got so crazy that mom served grape juice the next year. Well, that's my time. If you want to have a wild time later, I'm going out with some gay friends after the show. We're going shopping for onions at the local 24-hour store at midnight. Feel free to join us. But first, I'm going to stop up at the potty to clear up some of this nasty diarrhea. Good night. Greg, that was fantastic. Come on over. Thanks for being on Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. Thank you so much, Steve. It's always a pleasure to be here. As an upcoming comic, it must feel special to be standing at the intersection of Hollywood and or Broadway. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really inspiring. Uh, just being near the sign kind of puts some butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> butterflies. I'd love to hear some, some jokes and sketches about butterflies. Maybe next time uh, when you do your act. Sounds, yeah, yeah. I, I've got a lot of good jokes about butterflies. Great. Thanks so much for being on Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. Greg, we'll be right back. <laughs> One way I like to show that I like something is by wearing a t-shirt about it. We all have that in common, I suppose. Looks like we're all fans of Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. I sure am. I like it so much I bought this t-shirt on their website. Which website again? SGStarmakers.com Walter E. Smith, marker. Action. Walter E. Smith designers are unbelievable. They'll come to your home, lay everything out. The results will be incredible. At Smith, it's all about making your design vision a reality. The Smith designer will be your expert guide through this whole journey. At Walter E. Smith, our designers help you find what you're looking for. You'll find a look that fits at a price that fits. If you're going to put money into furniture, you ought to get good quality furniture that's going to enhance your lifestyle. Modern luxury, hand-picked, one-of-a-kind pieces. It's all here at Walter E. Smith. Come on down and see us today. You learn by doing. The great thing that you guys do here at Flashpoint is exactly that. I don't think you could be here for too long without the sort of infectious nature of everyone being hungry to learn. Tribeca Flashpoint is set up in a way where the whole direction of the school is preparing the students for the real world. Show people that you're willing to do anything for what you want to do. No fear, no greed, no anything. If you look up the word band in the dictionary, first you'll see some things about rubber bands. Those silly rubber circles are a lot of fun, but they're useful too. But then if you keep reading past the rubber bands part, you might learn that a band is a group of people that play really great music together as a team. And bands can play any sort of music you can think of except country or rap. Here's a great band called Gorilla Dicks with the song Alabama Jubilee. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gorilla Dix with Alabama Jubilee. Come join me here at the intersection of Hollywood and or Broadway. Uh, you know, I love that song. I I've seen the Wiggles do that song, and it's wonderful. Why did you guys decide to do Alabama Jubilee? We pick a song about America. That's great. Alabama is a state. In fact, we air our show in Huntsville, Alabama. So if you're watching in Huntsville, I guess that song was for you. Well, thanks so much, guys. We loved having you on the show. Did you know that we were on Twitter? To talk about our show, make sure you add Tic-Tac-Toe Star Makers to the end of your tweet. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. One way I like to show that I like something is by wearing a t-shirt about it. We all have that in common, I suppose. Looks like we're all fans of Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. I sure am. I like it so much I bought this t-shirt on their website. Which website again? SGStarmakers.com You learn by doing. The great thing that you guys do here at Flashpoint is exactly that. I don't think you could be here for too long without the sort of infectious nature of everyone being hungry to learn. Tribeca Flashpoint is set up in a way where the whole direction of the school is preparing the students for the real world. Show people that you're willing to do anything for what you want to do. No fear, no greed, no envy. Kids and grown-ups alike, thanks so much for tuning in to Steve Gadlin's Star Makers. We'll be back next week with more of tomorrow's stars of Hollywood and or Broadway. Always remember, this is yes, 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 this is no, 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 and this is goobble gobble, goobble gobble. Oh, the acts tonight were really great. Would you look at the time, though it's getting late. I hope to see you next time. See you next time, I hope to see you again. Well, the world is such a scary place, and I find peace when I see your face. I hope to see you next time. See you next time, I hope to see you again. We're born, then we die, and in between is a cacophony of chaos. What does it mean? I hope to see you next time. See you next time. I hope to see you again. Yes, I hope to see you again. Remember to dream big and do awesome things. This is Steve Gadlin saying, see you next time.